No, the answer is it's almost impossible to submit or tap someone out uh, standing up. Um, you could break a joint, right? So for example, um, if I were to put on a classic standing arm bar right here, I could break this elbow. I could just go, bam, drop my body weight, and I could snap the elbow. But he wouldn't tap out through, I mean, I can't tap him out here because as I apply pressure, he gets away from it by going down. And the more pressure, pressure I apply, the more he goes down until eventually he ends up on the ground. <laughs> and at that point, if I continue to apply pressure, he'll tap. But then we're not standing anymore, we're on the ground, right? Because the ground serves as a barrier to stop him from moving away from the pain of the lock. You know, that's the whole thing about joint locks. You apply pressure to the joint and the person will move away from that pain until they can't move away anymore. And typically that will be because they're on the ground. Um, to take another example, um, a wrist lock, right? This is an outward wrist lock. I could cause pain here, but the more, I pay, more pain I cause, the more it's going to, here, step this way. The more pain I cause, the more it's going to affect his structure. As I apply more, it affects his structure more. He goes down, down, down. If I continue applying pressure, he won't tap. He'll just end up on the ground. Or uh, this lock here, which is sometimes called a Z lock or an S lock. Um, and then in Jiu Jitsu that I studied, we call it an Ayadori. And Aikido, I believe that's a Miku. Right, so this is a nasty lock. It's extremely painful. Yes. But you see what it does? It makes him want to go down. And as I continue to apply pain, he'll go down further and further until he can't go down anymore because he's flat on his belly, and then he'll tap out. But he's not standing anymore. He's on the ground, right? Um, I could continue to give more and more examples, but the thing is, when the person is standing, they will either move away from the pain or they might find a way to squirrel out of it. Uh, take a hammer lock, for example, which is what I call locks where the arm goes behind the back. So um, here's an example of a hammer lock where my this arm shoots up between his arm and his back, and my hand goes into the crook of his elbow. And to create pain, I lift my elbow, driving his hand up toward his shoulder. Right. This is kind of a, a stand-up version of a, a kimura, right? Um, but the thing is, uh, if someone it really, really wants to, they could get out of this lock by spinning away from it. So I, I won't go super tight because I don't want to hurt him, but let's say I didn't have it quite tight enough, he would just spin away from the lock and he'd be out, right? Um, so if a person wanted to get, if, even if I had it on tight. It'll hurt me, but it, it's better than being It might even in injure him, it yeah. might even injure him. If I had it on really, really tight, he might damage his shoulder, but he could get out of it mm -hmm. um, if he was committed, that committed. On the ground, it's a different story. On the ground, he can't spin, right? He can't spin to get out of it because he'll be belly down. I'll be applying that same lock, but he'll be belly down and there's nowhere for him to go. The ground becomes my partner. Okay, you might say, but what about police locks, uh, come alongs, control locks that are used by bouncers and security guards and cops? to control someone? Um, yes and no. Uh, the classic lock that a lot of, say, bouncers, for example, know is the gooseneck, which is where I'm here. The elbow is planted against my chest, and I'm pulling in on the wrist. I could break the wrist quite easily here, just a little bit of pressure right there, and I could snap that wrist. And so, yes, this is used sometimes as a come along, and it could work as a come along if I don't give him time to think. So here, let's step back. If I rush in toward the door, using the pain of the lock to keep him moving, right? So I just use that to bum rush him out the door, and he's in so much pain as I move that he doesn't have time to think. It also helps that the patron is usually intoxicated. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's drunk, or he hasn't trained in martial arts, and so he just goes along with it. But if he had a moment to think, he might realize that all he has to do is yank his elbow out of here. It might hurt. Mm -hmm. Even if I put it on tight, trust me, I've done this. Even if I put it on super tight. Okay, maybe if I put it on really tight, 
Before he yanks his elbow, oh wait, hold on. Before he yanks his elbow out, he reaches across and he pulls down a little bit on my wrist. And then he pulls, pulls his elbow out. Mm -hmm. Which is why bouncers who work in pairs do both arms. One guy does this arm and one guy does that arm. And together they walk the guy out the door because then he has nothing to pull out of the lock and no direction to go. But it's still not really a submission, right? I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying, I, I, it won't work if I just stand here and go, come on, tap, you're submitted. No, he's not submitted, he'll do something. If nothing else, he'll just punch me in the face. Even if he's in pain, he might just take the pain and go, bam. I could break his wrist, but he might take that and just punch me in the face. Um, now, inverted gooseneck. This one's a lot tougher. This one's, I admit, I don't really know an escape from this lock. It's a really nasty lock. It's very, very tight. It is, in my opinion, the best of all come-alongs. But still, if he was willing to just take the pain, he could still punch me in the face. Um, so with that one, we turn the arm over so that it's palm up. We apply some pressure oh. here. We take the thumb and we walk this into the armpit. So this is the inverted gooseneck, which I'll teach on some other video. I'm not really teaching it right now, I'm just making a point. So I can cause tremendous pain right here, but if he wanted to just take that pain, he could still punch me. There wouldn't be much behind it, but. <laughs> no, so what good is this lock then? Well, the good is I walk him with it. I don't give him a chance to think about hitting me. I just take that lock, I put it on so tight that he's in terrible pain, and then I bum rush him out the door so he doesn't have a chance to think about what he wants to do. And that, that's true for chokes as well. I could use a choke to get him out the door. I could, um, okay, I could, take, I could go into a hammer lock behind the back, and I could come around, I could lift the chin, and then I could get him so he's off balance and he's stumbling. And I could keep him off balance so he's stumbling backward. Of course, I'm moving backward too which is not ideal, I have to keep looking behind me so that I don't run into a table or a patron or get clocked from behind. But so, yeah, I could do that. But to just stand in place and submit someone with a joint lock or a choke, it just, it, it's not really practical. It doesn't really work. So the short answer to your question is no. There are no arts that, strictly speaking, teach stand-up submissions. Submissions happen on the ground. Joint breaks can be done standing up. Um, but that's very unsportsmanlike. Yes, or just joint locks can be applied standing to create a striking opportunity. So if he grabs me, for example, I could apply this lock just to, so I, I, this is a Z lock. I come over the top and I apply this Z lock to create some pain here and affect this structure so that I can then go bang. <laughs> nice. So I use that lock to create a striking opportunity. My other choices are to break the joint or to use the lock to take him down to the ground, none of which is a stand-up submission. So there's the answer to your question. This is Sabil Combatives. Train hard, stay safe. Thank you very much.